Hi, welcome to Vibe Style Energy Healing Week 8, The Upper Chakras. Today we're going to talk about chakras 8 through 12 above the crown. And as we move through this ascension process, these are going to be the chakras that we are really focusing on awakening and beginning to really understand and experience. And speaking of experience, the upper chakras are much more experiential than they are logical or figuring them out. Figuring them out is not as important right now as it is to experience them. And as you allow yourself to experience their energies, you will figure them out more and more. Just having the awareness of these upper chakras helps them to open. Of course, it begins with opening the crown chakra, and that leads right into your eighth chakra. So today, we're going to be talking through chakras 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So five chakras that are beyond your crown chakra. So first, we're going to talk about the eighth chakra, or your soul star. Most likely you, likely you may have heard of the soul star. Uh, it is about two feet above your crown chakra, right above your head. Uh, the color associated with the soul star is ultraviolet light. The soul star is your center of divine love and spiritual compassion. And so once you are really opening that crown and feeling the connection to source, you're able to experience a spiritual sense of compassion and divine love on a real physical and integrated kind of way. It's also the epicenter of the entire chakra system. So it is the chakra that's right in between all of your physical chakras and all of your non-physical chakras. The soul star is really that energy center that is concerned with ascension, enlightenment, and wisdom. Uh, as we move from solar plexus-centered beings into heart-centered beings, we then have the soul star as something that's really available to us as far as accessing further enlightenment, further unity, and more wisdom, more universal truths. The activation of the soul star helps with the understanding, the visceral and integrated understanding that you are more than just your physical body. And so as you activate the soul star, you'll begin to encounter your life in that way. You'll begin to as you take a walk outside in nature, you'll start to see the world from a spiritual perspective perspective more and more. You'll be seeing certain things that are projected and you're projecting into your reality like certain animals, birds, insects, plants, trees, and you might start questioning, hmm, what does that mean? Why is that projected? Why am I projecting that into my reality right now? And the same thing in your interactions with other people. And what I want, the download that's coming through right now is that we are moving through this cycle, through the end of the third dimensional reality. And so you're going to be exposed to a lot of invitations of things to give and lend your energy to, both positive or light and negative or dark, which of course all is divine and all is part of physical experience. And yet you will be invited to lend your energy to a number of things that might be stressful, that might uh, seem tragic to you, that might seem like you really want to lend your energy in a way. And what I want to say about that is that it is wonderful to celebrate the things and talk about the things that we are passionate about and to talk about the things that we are for. Sometimes as we move through this cycle, there are moments when we are called to talk about things that we are against and we want to be cautious and discerning of the way in which we communicate our feelings on that, the way in which we communicate that that invitation or that that event or type of situation is something that we do not prefer. 
we can say that it is something we do not prefer without lending our energy empathically to the situation. Having compassion and empathizing and tying your energy in with it are two different things. So, um... There, the soul star is also the keeper of our karmic residue. So both positive and negative karma that we incur and are incurring through our parallel lives, the soul star is where that is stored. And so as you activate your soul star, you'll begin to have a bigger window into your parallel lives, a window of vision, knowing, or feeling, or perhaps hearing if you are clairaudient, um, or clairaudient is really a powerful uh, sense that you have right now. Um, and so you're able to access both the parallel lives that both uh, incur negative karma. And so you can take a look at that, take a look at those traumas and heal those traumas within yourself, within your oversoul. Um, you can heal those traumas. And then also the positive incarnations or the positive moments in your other incarnations where you are really celebrated, where you're really standing in your power, where you really got something right. So you're able to access both of those things. And as you do, you're able to clear out your parallel karma. And that is really what propels you up into the higher chakras beyond the soul star and what really propels you into that that fourth density, fifth dimensional earth, new earth that everyone and we keep talking about. Um, and so, yes, you activate it to sense into the traumas and release them. And it's so interesting sometimes how uh, even though we're not experiencing a certain trauma in this life, when we have a, a reflection or a remembering or a memory of something traumatic that's going on in a parallel life, it really triggers us and can trigger tears and healing. It's really, really powerful. Um, and so the mantra that you can say while you're meditating to activate your soul star is Ma'azad. Ma'azad. Say it with me. Ma'azad. Ma'azad. And so you can say this to yourself silently or out loud as you meditate to activate your soul star and uh, start using it in your everyday life. The ninth chakra is your rainbow star. And this rainbow star is about four feet above the soul star. So we're getting way out there. Um, and the rainbow star is that Christ light energy that is within all of us. Um, you know, Christ came embodied at a certain point in our linear history, and yet all of that energy that he contained within him when he passed on and ascended, passed on, resurrected, and then ascended, uh, he released that energy to all of us in the collective. And so we are the second coming of the Christ energy. We are the coming of compassion and kindness and forgiveness and unconditional love in this world. And so that ninth chakra, the rainbow star, is where you really start accessing those unconditionalities within yourself and physical healing, of course, which is one of the things that Yeshua or Christ was famous for. Um, the color associated is a spinning rainbow. So it's an oscillating rainbow that spins clockwise or just like the rest of your chakras. This chakra, your rainbow star, is the center of joy, pure joy. Those moments that you find yourself in absolute bliss, absolutely in balance and in tune with your highest good and your highest excitement. Maybe even when you get lost in the moment. Uh, these are the times that your ninth chakra are really active, is really active. Um, the rainbow star also holds your karmic blueprint. Now, so while your soul star had held the residue, your rainbow star holds the karmic blueprint. So this uh, chakra holds all of the lessons that you came here to learn. Your... Um, 
your mission and knowledge of all of your lifetimes. Whereas in the soul star, you're accessing, you know, things that are useful for your healing and empowerment. But in the rainbow star, you're able to access the knowledge that you have had in all your lifetimes. So you're able to really sense into the ancient knowledge that you have refined in your other lifetimes and also take a look at the span or perhaps even feel or sense into just how many incarnations you have had in your individual soul stream within your oversoul. Um holds the karmic blueprint and your soul, con which is your soul contract, right? So the people that you're here to meet, the uh, relationships that you're meant to have, the uh, purpose that you're meant to fulfill, all of that information is contained in your rainbow star. So when you start feeling as though you have a real grasp on your purpose, when you start feeling as though you are able to have compassion and kindness and forgiveness in difficult or challenging situations, um, or if you're able to have compassion and kindness and forgiveness, um, even if you're not fully feeling in balance, that is a sign that your rainbow star or ninth chakra is active. And the mantra for the rainbow star is L-E-T, L-E-T, say it with me, L-E-T, L-E-T, L-E-T. So you can say this mantra to yourself as you're meditating, either silently or out loud, to activate that ninth or rainbow star chakra. Moving up into the tenth chakra is uh, about eight to 10 feet above your rainbow star chakra and your 10th chakra is your silver star. This is a very galactically connected chakra, I'm being told. And this is the chakra where you're able to begin manifesting what you have learned in your past lives or your parallel lives. This is when you are able to begin perhaps teaching the things that you have grounded in your parallel lives. And it is also the merging of your masculine and femininity because, of course, we all choose to incarnate, all of us human beings, and choose to incarnate into physical vessels, either male or female, sometimes uh, a little bit of both. Uh, but for the most part, we, we choose one or the other. What I would say about, you know, hermaphrodites and transsexuals and things of that nature is that they are here to show us uh, what it is to have the masculine and feminine in the same body. They are here to illustrate that, uh, that, that incarnation and that life is not rigid in, in its creative uh, abilities or desires, uh, but that it can manifest as both masculine and feminine in one body. And a physical illustration of what's going on within each of us energetically, because we each have both masculine and feminine aspects aspects that need to come into harmonious balance for us to become fully integrated and unified beings within ourselves and as a collective, a human collective. And so the 10th chakra or your silver star is where your uh, polarity or duality in either a uh, gender goes away and you become that unified being. Uh, or are that unified being in in uh, in energetic representation. So the mantra for the tenth chakra is Za D P D. Say it with me. Za D P D. Za D P D. Za D P D. And again, this is something that you can say to yourself either silently or out loud as you meditate on that tenth chakra to activate it. Now, above the 10th chakra is the 11th chakra. The 11th chakra is 15 feet above that 10th chakra. Whew, gotta ground myself as I'm talking about these. <laughs> um, and the 11th chakra is called your Star of Miracles. And your Star of Miracles is where you are able to access and manifest into the physical the miracles um, 
the spiritual miracles or the uh, extrasensory abilities that you can perform physically, like uh, telekinesis, um, telepathy, I, I, I would say is more in the crown chakra and in the soul star, but this up here in the 11th is really into the telekinesis. So moving objects either through sound vibration or with your mind or with your emotions. So telekinesis, teleportation, um, space and time travel, uh, and things of this nature. The color associated with the Star of Miracles, it's a very etheric, rosy color when we feel or sense into it. So kind of a rose quartz, but more mystical and etheric and not so physical in nature. And the mantra for our Star of Miracles is Nipita. Say it with me. Nipita, Nipita, Nipita. And uh, you can say this mantra to yourself either silently or out loud uh, while you are meditating to activate that 11th chakra, your star of miracles. And now last and certainly not least, we're going to talk about the 12th chakra, which is your solar star. And this solar star chakra is 25 feet above your star of miracles. So if you've been adding up the number of feet above your crown that these chakras are, you will be amazed. And so the solar star is your multi-dimensional sun. This is the area that the activation of your solar consciousness exists. This is where you start to feel connected, not just on a earth collective level, but on a solar system collective level. And so all of the planets within our solar system are connected to us energetically. There is life in different forms, perhaps perhaps not physical on many of the other planets within our solar system, some physical also. Um, but this level, the solar star, is where you are connecting to our sun, the consciousness of our sun, and thereby connecting to the consciousness of all of the planets and all of the celestial energies and bodies that orbit around that sun. And your solar star is your power source. It's your connection to our solar, our sun, uh, and where you can begin to manifest, uh, you're manifesting non-physically. And so of course there are uh, chakras, so to speak, beyond the solar star that connect us within the galaxy and within the universe because we are one within this entire universe. Um, but for vibe style purposes, we're just focusing on 8 through 12. So that solar star is where you're connecting on a galactic level to our solar system and you're be able to sense beyond that into the galactic consciousness, meaning our military Milky Way Galaxy Consciousness Collective. So very, very exciting stuff. Please make sure that, oh, and one more thing, I almost forgot the mantra for our solar star is Na L E L. Say it with me. Na L E L. Na L E L. Na L E L. And so you can say this mantra to yourself silently or out loud to begin to activate your solar star chakra. And a message that's coming through is that you, you can begin at any chakra, any of the chakras that are outside of your crown with chanting of the mantras. Though in order to have balance, your guides and my guides are recommending that you begin with the eighth chakra and work your way into the 12th chakra. You can do that by spending a day or a week on each chakra or even doing uh, each chakra, you know, eight through 12 or root through 12 would really be the best to keep you really well grounded. Um, in, in a single meditation, however, it is not as much advised at this stage in our evolution that we go straight for the 12th chakra. Um, and so that message is coming through. So 
That being said, I hope that you have enjoyed vibe style energy healing. I hope that you feel prepared to heal yourself in a real practical physical way as well as feeling excited about all of the changes and the ascension that you are experiencing in your 8th through 12th chakras. Make sure that you check out the journaling journey on associated with the upper chakras. It has some really interesting exploration for you to do to begin to and continue to activating and utilizing your upper chakras. I have so enjoyed being with you throughout the duration of this course. I love you today and every day and I will talk to you soon.